Hi, it's Miss Lee again, and this is part two of solving one-step equations with models. In part one, we learned how to solve one-step equations that had addition and subtraction with the models. And in this part, we're going to do the same thing, but instead of addition and subtraction, we're going to solve equations that have multiplication and division. Okay, you need your notes, so here we go. This equation is 3x equals 12. You can see that there are three x tiles. Remember this is an algebra mat. The line down the center represents our equal sign. On the left side we have three x's. On the right side we have 12 positive unit tiles. Now this is an addition and subtraction where we need to make zero pairs. Okay? We still need to isolate the variable or find out how much for one of the x's one of the x tiles. But there are no units that are being added or subtracted to make unit pairs or to make zero pairs with. Instead, you need to think, okay, three x's equals 12. So how many of these 12 belong to just one x? Well, this is pretty easy. All you have to do is just take your 12 and divide it into three equal groups. So 12 divided by three is four. So each x tile will get four unit tiles. And you model it, you show grouping your units into the three equal groups and then drawing a line to each x tile. This shows that each x tile equals four. So our answer would be x equals four. And we're not quite done because we still need to check our answer. So we're going to go back to the original equation and instead of an x, we're going to replace it with four, our solution. So when you have 3x, that means to multiply. So you're multiplying 3 times 4, and does that equal 12? Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. So we solved it correctly. Good job. Okay, we have another equation. This one is 2k, or 2x, equals negative 16. And we're going to do the same thing. There are no zero or no unit tiles on the side of the variable to make zero pairs with. We don't need to make zero pairs. We just need to find out if two tiles, two x's, or two k's in this case, equals negative 16, then how many would equal one? Well, you're gonna do the same thing we just did. You're gonna take the 16 and you're gonna divide them into two equal groups. And you'll see that each group will have eight negative units. So x, or k, is the variable being used, equals negative 8. Now you always want to go check because it's so easy to be going through really fast and to make a mistake. So if I take 2 and I replace k with negative 8, 2 times negative 8, does that equal negative 16? Well, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, so it sure does. Okay, now this equation is a little bit different. What do you notice over here on the left side? Our x tiles are negative, right? So our equation is negative 3x equals positive 6. Now the thing about having negative x tiles, you don't want that, okay? You want to change them to positive x's, okay? We don't like saying negative x equals this. We only want a positive x. So this is what we do. We want a positive variable. So we're going to have to get rid of these negatives. And you cannot get rid of them just by erasing them or just by poof, making them positives. You have to make zero pairs. So what happens is I'm going to go ahead and make three positive x tiles. Because that way they will cancel out. But remember that this is a balance. You have to keep the two sides of your scale equal. So if you're going to add three positives on the left side, then you have to add three positives on the right side. Now these are not unit tiles that we're adding. These are our actual x tiles. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get rid of our zero pairs. And we don't have anything on the left side. There were no x tiles on the right side, so there are no zero pairs to make. So now we have, on the right side, six positive units and three positive x tiles. We're exactly where we wanted. We wanted our x tiles to be positive. They're now positive. But they're no longer alone, are they? 
So I'm going to change my color. The next step is I have to isolate my X tiles. So I have to get rid of these positive unit tiles. And we've done this before. We did this in video one. We're going to make zero pairs. So instead of six positive, there's six positives to make zero pairs. I need six negatives. And again, if I'm adding the six negatives to the right side, guess what? You got it. I have to add six negatives to the left side. <coughs> now we remove our zero pairs. These are all zero, so remove all of them. There are no other unit tiles here, so there are no zero pairs. And now I have three X's on the right side and six negatives. My X tiles are positive. So if three of these positive X tiles equal six negatives, well, how many would each X tile be? You gotta take your six negatives and you have to divide them into three equal groups. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to show how much goes into each group. So we have negative 2 equals x. Or you could say x equals negative 2. This is a lot of extra work here, extra step. So let's definitely make sure that we solve this correctly. So I'm going to come up here, replace negative 2 with x, or replace x with negative 2. So we have negative 3 times a negative 2 is supposed to equal 6. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so this is true. 6 does equal 6. Phew. Okay, so let's look at a different equation. What is being done to our x tile here? There's a line and it's cutting it into half. So what we're doing is we are dividing this x tile by 2. We're dividing it into two equal parts. So t divided by 2 equals 8. So think, half of t is 8. So one whole x or one whole t is how many? What this means is this whole x tile does not equal 8. Only half of it because we cut it into 2. So all of these 8 unit tiles go into this part of the x tile. Well, if this is cut into half, that means both sides are equal. So if this side equals 8 positive units, then what is this side going to equal? 8 positive units. So this one was 8 positive, this one's 8 positive. So together, the whole x tile will equal positive 16. So let's plug it into our equation. It's actually t, sorry. 16 divided by 2, does that equal 8? It does. So we solved it correctly. Let's try that one again. Here's our X tile. What are we doing or what's being done to the X tile? Well, I see that I have, it's been cut into one, two, three parts. Does the whole X tile equal these four positives? No, just one third because you cut it into three parts. So an equa our equation is P divided by three equals four. Okay, so only, whoops, this portion here equals 4 positive. And if these are all equal, then that means this equals 4 as well as this one. So the whole x tile equals 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. And they're using p, so p equals 12. Let's check it. 12 divided by 3, will that equal 4? Yes, it does. We solved it correctly. Good work, guys.